You mentioned that your favorite snare mic was an SM57, and you like to put one on the top and one on the bottom. One on the bottom. If the way the guy sets his drums up doesn't hang you up, what's your favorite angle to put the mic on the snare drum? You know, this changes every single day. If What changes every day? The angle of the microphone to the drum head will change every, every day. It's really amazing and, and, and wonderful in a sense that you can get a whole drum sound and it'll be perfect and you cut these tracks and you go home and you come back the next day and it isn't the same. And I think it has to do with the humidity, the phases of the moon, whatever. The individual date in time, mm -hmm. or where, where the stars are, all that absurdities, but it'll be totally different. So, so you're saying it's not a thing. It's not a thing, right. Sometimes I'll come into the snare a little bit. Sometimes it'll want to be back off the head. Sometimes it'll want to come down like this. Sometimes it wants to go in at an angle like that. Mm -hmm. And also... Sometimes if the guy is a murderous guy on the hi-hat, I might want to have some foam over the side to keep the hi-hat out of the mic, and that's going to change where it goes. Just a lot of things. I have a friend of mine that actually built a tray for his 57 that was foam that fit in there. They could just go like that. Like a baffle between the... Yeah, a baffle between the hi-hat and, and that... the snare mic. Yeah. Uh-huh. Keep the hi-hat out of the snare mic. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. You know, when you're trying to get a hi-hat sound, a hi-hat, especially off axis in a 57 is not very pretty. Mm -hmm. So you want to keep as much of that out of there as you can. What do you do when a guy's using brushes? What kind of mics do you use? Mm. How do you handle that? Well, with brushes, I'll use these, uh, maybe I'll, I'll, put, I'll try like a Cam 84 also on the top of the snare and I'll in try. In addition? In addition to, and then other than that, I, it'll be uh, level adjustments. You have to raise the level of those drums in order to get some some tone from them. I mean, and the idea is, if you're recording them at a good level, brushes will give you a nice boom on the toms. That boom, yep. Also with brushes, I like to have a lot of different kinds of brushes because a little bit different thickness of their brushes are going to give you a whole new, a whole different thing. How about those kind of sticks that are little clusters of sticks tied together? No, no, I keep that the same. Uh, uh, we were using them last night a little bit, and uh, I'll just find that you just have to make sure that you're you're not getting too low in the level. Uh -huh. Right. But, you know, in these digital workstations, you don't have to worry that much about going into the noise floor, whereas it used to be that case. Uh -huh. You've worked with a lot of different drums. What do you think's the best snare drum? I've never found the best over. I, I mean, I have, actually, I would... I mean, guys go, Black Beauty. You got to try that. And I've a I, black I, I put a Black Beauty up there. You mean a Ludwig? I don't know, really. And it would sound great. And the next day, it would sound terrible. Then I had heard about this. It's amazing. And this is the great thing about it. You can't say it, something is perfect every time. I mean, I've loved, I love a lot of piccolo snares for certain things that, because of, uh, just because of the the... the the adrenaline or the the attack that they have, and the and the timing between the top and the bottom head, all like that. Uh -huh. uh, I used uh, I recorded a one of these big big name guys, uh, Jim Keltner or one of those fellows, and they had these drums that were made out of the sunken logs in the Great Lakes. There were these, <laughs> you know, they used to take the logs and they would float them down and they would they put them in the Great Lakes. Well, X amount of those logs sunk. And they stayed at the bottom there for like a hundred years, and they've just recently brought them up. The Japanese bought a great portion of that wood, and I guess some drum manufacturers did it. And this snare drum was made out of this hundred-year-old wood. It just sounded wonderful. Mm -hmm. Besides the 57, what other mics work well on the top or bottom of the snare drum? What kind of thing? Well, you know, I've used... Okay. Uh, I, for the longest time, I, I really liked 414s on the bottom, especially in hypercardioid, so I could get those... Up. On the bottom? On the bottom of the snare, snare drum. drum. I would like a 414 on the bottom of the snare drum. Uh, or I would use a KM84 or so, a condenser mic, but I found that, that the uh, the 57 gives me what I need. I, you know, I don't really need that. Real high-endy thing. Right, yeah. 